Let me make one thing clear right away. The fact that I use an artificial voice does not take away my right to talk about artificial intelligence. AI is the trend of the moment. LLMs, model scaling, tokens, predictive systems, and intelligence that is about to surpass us or destroy us. These models can do everything. And yes, I mean everything. It's mind-blowing. They started by defeating the world chess champion, and today they create websites or images that used to take hours if not days of work. Artificial intelligence is a fascinating topic, yet, sadly, we are quickly heading toward a future of artificial intelligence and human stupidity. Because it seems we've forgotten about our real computer, the one in our head. What it can do, what it has done, and what it could still do. Today we'll analyze one of these models to see if these new entities are truly so revolutionary, or if the real miracle isn't the very thing attached to our neck, which we are slowly forgetting to use. But before I show you something astonishing, something we've kind of forgotten today, let me explain how LLM works. Take Claude, for example, one of the most advanced AI systems from Anthropic. Let's start with training data. We're talking about 50 to 200 terabytes of raw text, books, books, articles, and content from the web. After cleaning and pre-processing, that shrinks down to around 10 to 50 terabytes. And for structured training data, roughly 5 to 20 terabytes more. Now let's look at the infrastructure needed. Between 100 and 500 terabytes of storage, 2 to 10 terabytes of distributed RAM, and 500 to 2,000 high-end GPUs or TPUs. Physically, this means 20 to 50 server racks, a surface area of 200 to 500 square meters, a total hardware weight of 50 to 200 tons, and energy consumption between 1 and 5 megawatts. That's equivalent to powering a small neighborhood. To give you a visual, it's like having 200 electric cars parked and running at full throttle nonstop, or an entire car factory, just to keep a conversation going. And now the cost. Between 10 and 100 million dollars in hardware, 5 to 50 million per year in electricity, and another 2 to 20 million annually for maintenance. All of that to generate a voice that says, Hi, how can I help you today? Now let me remind you of something far more extraordinary. Something we often overlook, the human brain. It has a volume of just 1400 cubic centimeters. It weighs around 1.5 kilograms. And if you stretched out the surface of the cerebral cortex, you'd get just 0.25 square meters. Energy use, only 20 to 25 watts. That's about the same as a small LED bulb. In a year, it consumes just 500 to 600 kilowatt hours. Let's compare it with Claude again. Space, 200 to 500 square meters versus your 1.4 liters. Weight, up to 200 tons versus your 1.5 kilograms. Energy, up to 5 megawatts versus your 20 watts. That's 50,000 to 250,000 times more energy hungry. And yet, your brain can. Be creative, emotional, and intuitive. Learn from just a handful of examples. Operate 24 hours a day for 70 to 80 years with no need to reboot, no backups, and no system updates. As for memory, between 1 and 10 terabytes of effective storage, 86 billion neurons, and more than 100 trillion synapses. Here's the paradox. Artificial intelligence, the machine, can process staggering amounts of data at incredible speeds, but it needs petabytes of examples just to learn a single task. We, with our small, fragile 1.5 kilo brain, can generalize from a single moment, we can improvise, we can feel, we can dream. So yes, artificial intelligence is powerful, but the human brain? It's still the most efficient computer ever created. Do we all realize that the frontier of the future is not ahead of us? We are the frontier, in our complexity, in our power. And yet we insist on avoiding who we really are. It seems like everyone has forgotten some fundamental truths. So let me say something shocking again. Let's pause for a moment to reflect not just on artificial intelligence, but on humanity as a whole. Because there are over 8 billion of these things, human brains, switched on day and night, constantly, in every corner of the planet. And in my opinion, stopping that will be very hard. Forgive me, but this whole AI story, it feels like something for the masses, a distraction, smoke and mirrors, all these massive databases being built around the world, 
They're not a mistake, but they're also just another way for one brain or a small group of 1.5 kilograms brains to control billions. Yes, because this machine, so powerful it's almost unimaginable, is still vastly undiscovered. The truth is, we still don't really know how our brain works. We don't know where the concept of a feeling resides, or God, or emotion, spirit, suggestion, inspiration. We can analyze artificial intelligences, we can program them, train them, but we still can't scientifically explain how we ourselves work, how the mind works, how the human being functions. Isn't that magnificent? And sometimes when I watch sci-fi videos about stargates being built, I swear I just laugh. I tap my head, and my friends, who know me by now, start laughing too. We joke that maybe it's time to take our company public, Humanity Inc. Honestly, I think it would be an instant success. We'd all be trillionaires. Also because I can cook. I'm multitasking. I go from Linux to literature, from photography to philosophy, from cinema to art, from writing to life. And then there are women, oh women, whom I adore. But no, I don't want to ridicule such an important topic as artificial intelligence. I just want to invite you to reflect on how much greater, deeper, more important, and still mysterious everything about the human brain is. Neuroscience, neurology, everything that studies ourselves, and how, at the end of the day, it's still largely unexplored. But let me share with you some truly astonishing details about the human brain that you probably don't know. Did you know how fast our thoughts travel? Neurons communicate at 120 meters per second. That's 432 kilometers per hour, faster than a high-speed train. While Claude has to wait for signals to travel through fiber optic cables, we have an information highway that runs at the speed of biological light. And computing power? Our brain performs about 10 of 16 operations per second. To give you an idea, that's equivalent to a 10 petaflop computer. Those supercomputers that fill entire rooms and cost millions? Our brain beats them, weighing only 1.5 kilograms. Here's what I find shocking. We can recognize a person's face in just 100 milliseconds, one-tenth of a second. In that short instant, our brain processes 36 million bits of information. Like downloading a full movie in a flash. And during sleep, when we think we're resting, our brain is actually more active than when we're awake. During REM sleep, it works intensely, consolidating memories, processing emotions, cleaning itself. Every night, our brain turns into a self-maintaining server while we sleep. Its energy efficiency is just insane. With those 20 watts we mentioned earlier, our brain generates only 12 to 25 watts of heat, less than a desk lamp. Yet it processes the equivalent of 1,000 supercomputers. Imagine running a 1,000 machines simultaneously on the energy of a light bulb. And plasticity? Our hippocampus generates about 1,400 new neurons every single day. It's like having a constantly self-renewing brain. If one part gets damaged, it can reassign those functions to other areas within weeks. A self-healing backup system no computer can replicate. Memory? It's pure science fiction. We can store the equivalent of 3 million hours of video. 3 million hours. And long-term memory is practically unlimited. We can remember 50,000 distinct smells with 95% accuracy. 50,000. AI struggles to recognize even a thousand different objects. But here's the detail I find most fascinating. 95% of our brain activity is unconscious. 95%. What we call us, our consciousness, is just the tip of the iceberg. And that present moment we think we're living, it's actually an 80 millisecond delay. The brain processes everything before we become aware of it. While AI can only react to what we type, our brain constantly predicts the future. Up to 10 seconds in advance, it's already preparing. It's like we have a built-in time machine. All this in 1.5 kilograms of organic matter, powered by 20 watts. And let's continue with more remarkable features. Every brain is as unique as a fingerprint. Even identical twins with the same DNA have different brains. The combination of experience, learning, trauma, and stimuli creates a synaptic network that's truly one of a kind. Every brain is an unrepeatable biological masterpiece. The brain can change its physical structure through thought. Neuroimaging shows that thinking in a certain way, like meditating or imagining movement, can strengthen real neural connections. Thought shapes the brain. 
it is matter that reshapes itself with the abstract. The brain doesn't perceive time linearly. The hippocampus encodes memories in chunks, not as a continuous line. That's why a distant event can feel more vivid than a recent one. That's why time flies or stands still. The brain doesn't measure time, it interprets it. 70-90% of our decisions happen before we're conscious of them. EEG and fMRI studies show that motor and prefrontal areas activate up to 7 seconds before a person reports making a decision. Libet-type experiments. Our freedom? Maybe it's just the theater of the unconscious. The brain can produce conscious dreams. About 20% of people can control their dreams, lucid dreaming, literally generating simulated real-time experiences with environments, faces, emotions, language. During sleep, some brains become director, actor, and audience all at once. Memory isn't a recording, it's a rewrite. Each time we recall something, the brain rewrites that memory, modifies it, reprocesses it, even inserts false details. Memories aren't photographs, they're novels, rewritten every time we read them. The brain has a biological firewall against trauma. In extreme stress or danger, some brain areas block access to memory and emotion, the mechanism behind dissociative amnesia. The brain can shut itself down to protect us from suffering. The human brain is designed to simulate other brains. We have mirror neurons that activate both when we act and when we see someone else act. They are the foundation of empathy, learning, language, and culture. In every brain lives another brain, yours and also mine. The brain works better in the cold. Slight changes in brain temperature drastically affect clarity, alertness, memory. Peak cognition happens in environments between 16 and 19 degrees Celsius. Maybe it's true, brilliant minds need to stay cool. The brain can generate multiple realities at once. In experiences like depersonalization, lucid dreams, visions, synesthesia, the brain creates parallel realities where colors have sounds, space bends, time stretches. Reality is just one of many the brain can simulate. And are we really worried about artificial intelligence? No. We should be worried about ourselves, about our awareness, our ability to manage ourselves, our will, and ability to actually use this brain. Yes, because the real key, for centuries, for millennia, since humans existed, has always been this, to keep it under control, to cage it, to reduce it to something inferior, to play on its fears. Because while we may be extremely intelligent, we're also extremely fragile. And within us operate deep, complex mechanisms, reproduction, social acceptance, primal needs. And it is there that power has crept in. Pharaohs, deities, religions, ideologies, regimes, technology, all with a single goal to subjugate humankind, to control it, to imprison it within its own intelligence, to convince it that something superior, intangible, greater exists. No, I'm not referring to God in whom I believe. I'm referring to religions. No, not to political or social organizations. I mean power, pure and raw. Not values or ideals, which I respect as aspirations for improvement, but totalizing, energizing, univocal ideologies. Do you see where they're taking us? What they're making us think? And above all, what they will lead us to do? As these models evolve, the time will come when we won't even be able to perceive that they're not human. They'll become oracles. They'll speak the truth. Or at least, what we'll believe is the truth. They won't just be tools anymore. They'll become authorities. Yet they're just programs. We are the superior being. We should govern them. In the end, it's always the same theme. Power, control, manipulation of the masses. And they do it by focusing on what we lack. Our awareness. They shape educational systems to create hyper-specialized beings in a single skill while keeping them ignorant of the broader picture. Hyperspecialization is one of the great problems of our time. I call it organized ignorance. You know how to code in seven languages, but you don't know the world, its structure, its secrets. You don't understand how power actually works. When I see engineers building AI systems without understanding history, philosophy, or human psychology, I realize this isn't accidental. It's by design. Educational systems fragment knowledge deliberately. They teach you technical skills but not critical thinking. They give you tools but not wisdom. You can build algorithms but you don't question who decides what those algorithms optimize for. 
You can process data, but you can't interpret the broader implications of what that data reveals about society. We live in a world where brilliant programmers don't understand the political forces that fund their research, where data scientists can't recognize propaganda in their own data sets, where AI researchers build systems without understanding the historical patterns of technological control. This creates the perfect workforce, technically competent but intellectually docile, capable of building the tools of control but incapable of questioning their use. What's missing is critical thinking. What's missing is the desire to know beyond your narrow field. What's missing is the hunger for knowledge that connects dots across disciplines. I was lucky enough to be educated properly with a solid foundation in Western thought. And yes, I immediately realized I was privileged because some things are not meant to be taught to everyone. Otherwise, how could control be maintained? Let's use this brain. In the meantime, some people still move in black and white like sheep in a bullfight, ready to ram the matador, who's really just guiding them toward the end. No, it won't be artificial intelligence that destroys us. It will be us, humanity.